prepare for an informational rant. Windows 11 may look nice and have better functionality than Windows 10, but the rollout and compatibility are both a huge fail on Microsoft's part. I know some hardcore Windows lovers will disagree, as well as uh, obviously Microsoft themselves, but I think that they really dropped the ball here. Let me explain though. The whole TPM thing is ridiculous. Microsoft says that they require TPM and not just any TPM, but TPM 2.0 and newer for security purposes. I disagree with that. You can have a secure computer with TPM 1.0 and various versions between 1.0 and 2.0. It's just, yes, 2.0 is an added layer of security, but it doesn't mean that your computer is not secure just because you don't have 2.0 or newer. They also have requirements on processors. They say it's to provide a 99.8% crash free experience. Uh, I disagree with that as well. First off, it's Windows, which means it'll crash at some point. Just, I mean, I've had experience with Windows 95 all the way up to Windows 10, and I can say that each version that I have used over all these years, including my beloved XP and Windows 7, they all will crash at some point, but that's not necessarily because of the processor. That be, can be because of RAM, that can be, be because of malware, um, a glitch in software. Um, there's, there's a number, you know, your hard drive, there's a number of reasons why something can crash outside of your processor. So with that being said, secondly, I also have a Windows 10 machine that has what I would consider a 99.8% crash free experience. Matter of fact, it hasn't crashed since I fixed the blue screen of death that ha started happening, um, it was like a week, two weeks after I purchased the brand new laptop and that was back in 2016. It may be a bit slow at times, but it doesn't crash. And I think the slowness is due to a little bit of age, but also simply because the, uh, the hard drive is just a regular spinning platter and not a solid state drive. So that's to be expected in a, in a way. Here's the thing, the whole Windows PC Health Check app is total crap. So my HP, the one that experienced a blue screen of death five times in the first two and a half months is almost six years old. The PC Health Check app says that it's two years old. Check out the screenshot here. You'll also see that it shows that I have a solid state drive in this laptop. But as I told you, I do not. I know that because I replaced the, di the damaged hard disk drive with another hard disk drive that is a spinning, spinning platter drive. The only thing that the Health Check app is correct on when it comes to the computer specs is the 12 gigs of RAM. So if the Health Check app cannot get the specs correct on a computer, how is it truly supposed to figure out if my computer is compatible or not? Because it clearly doesn't know what it's talking about, so therefore it can't guarantee whether my computer is compatible or not. So I have no faith in that app, which really breaks my faith in Microsoft themselves. On top of this, Microsoft has also struggled to explain their requirements, releasing update after update after updated info, and as you guessed it, after more updated info. And so, if they're constantly releasing this, trying to explain themselves, I don't think they really know what their own requirements are at this point. And if they do, they're clearly not explaining it very well. And it also appears that they're changing a lot of what they're saying, considering they said that if your computer doesn't meet the requirements, they'll still allow for you to download and install Windows 11, but it may not get automatic updates, and it probably won't get security updates. I have to say, that's, I'm gonna determine that as a lie, and here's why. My HP laptop that the health check can't get the specs right on, and my built desktop that I use as a server, neither meet the requirements. However, they both have TPM. I believe it's version one point something. Uh, I can't install Windows 11 traditionally, so I try to use the Windows 11 ISO. I still can't get it on there. It puts an error saying that my computer doesn't meet the requirement, the required specs and yada yada, so I can't install. But Microsoft said even if I don't meet the minimum requirements, I can install it. So which is it? Can I or can I not? 
it appears that I can't. So I'm kind of curious as to how this will affect other users because I'm sure that some people will still be able to even if they don't meet the minimum requirements and then there's going to be others like me that can't. So they're not really keeping things um, consistent. Last but not least, they think that they will have all eligible computers updated to Windows 11 by mid-2022. That means they are taking eight months to roll out software to millions of computers. That's such a long time that in that time frame, chances are, especially if they do it like they do Windows 10, where they come out with two major updates a year, usually spring and fall, and then increment updates in between, they're going to have a full increment or full update in the spring before these other computers will, before all computers that are eligible for Windows 11 will even have Windows 11. And that's just pure silliness. Uh, and so I think that this, I think that them doing this will also encourage some people to go out and buy new computers so that way they don't have to wait because they may not know if their computer is updated or upgradable or not because the PC Health Check, Health Check app may not be completely accurate for them because I know it's not for me. And so I believe, and I hope that I am wrong, I really do, but I do believe that Microsoft has put these restrictions out there in order to boost the sales of new computers. Yes, it is true that Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, and Windows 10 all did not support every single Windows machine out there. However, they did support more than Windows 11, and the restrictions were little to none in order to upgrade. The biggest issue that you had with upgrading was basically you had to pay for the new version on most of them until they got to the Windows 10 where they allowed it in a certain time frame. They allowed several people to update for free and that's kind of what they're doing with Windows 11 right now which I think is a good thing you know they had little to no requirements compared especially compared to the requirements that they're putting on Windows 11 and with Windows 11 they've also got a lot of inaccuracies they've got a lot of explaining that they try to do that they can't do that they're trying to do and well they can't because they don't even know and so again I think it's really just a ploy to make more money I hope I'm wrong but I think so. My Windows 10 machines, they both work great. There's no need for me to upgrade. Sure, I want the new software, but I don't need the new software. So, like many people who cannot get the Windows 11 update for whatever reason, I will not go out and buy a new computer. And I think a lot of others will probably not go out and buy a new computer purely for Windows 11. So, if they are purely doing this for money, I kind of honestly hope that it backfires on Microsoft. Uh, but if they're not trying to do it for more money and they really do care more about security, I don't know, but if that's if they really do care, care more about security than money, then I hope that you know whatever they do works for them. I promise I'm not making all these claims because I couldn't get Windows 11 on either of my machines. Uh, I've said it in the past that I think that TPM 2.0 and the processor requirements, I really do think that that's a ploy for making more money. I've been saying that since I saw the requirements uh, before I even knew whether my computers were compatible or not. I didn't even try, well I did try to get the beta on my desktop and knew right then and there that I couldn't because of uh, compatibility issues. But when I tried it with the ISO, you know, I was like, wow, they're really not allowing anybody even though they say they would. So. You know, I think that a lot of this just kind of pushes forward my point that they're doing it for money and not security. But again, I hope I'm wrong. I hope they really do have good intentions. If you have a computer with, that is compatible with my with Windows 11 and you don't have one that is compatible with Windows 11, theoretically, now I'm going to throw this disclaimer out there. You need to test this on a hard drive that has no nothing on it or just things that you don't care about do not try this with your hard drive that you use on a day-to-day -day basis with your job or with uh, personal stuff test it on a on an extra hard drive but theoretically if you've got a computer that's compatible and a computer that's not you should be able to install Windows 11 on the compatible computer take that hard drive and put it in the non-compatible computer and hopefully it'll work 
for some people, I'm sure that will work. For other people, I'm sure it won't work. But again, do not do it on your primary hard drive because I do not want you to lose your files. If you lose your data because you didn't listen to the warning, that is your fault. Just want to throw that out there. With updates and upgrades, I always suggest you know wait a couple of weeks, maybe a month, make sure that there's no major issues. On top of that, always test with an extra hard drive if you have one laying around. If you don't have one laying around, wait until other people try it before you try it. Just you know, better safe than sorry. And I always, always, always suggest before doing a major update, even if you know it's okay, make sure your computer's backed up. Make sure your data's backed up. I don't care if it's on a cloud somewhere or if it's on a external hard drive or if you have an internal hard drive on your desktop that, uh, you know, desktop computer, you have a second internal hard drive. Uh, just make sure that all your data's backed up before doing any major upgrades. With all of that being said, I do like Windows 11. I was very skeptical at first because it was almost like they put makeup on a pig and called it something new. However, I think they've done a lot of good things and implemented some new features correctly. After doing more reading and uh, research, I'm confident that Windows 11 is better than Windows 10. So kudos to Microsoft for making a better operating system. I will get Windows 11 at some point. Um, I'm going to rebuild my desktop server computer with a new motherboard and processor, which will be compatible with Windows 11. I'm rebuilding it due to age and performance, not because of the Windows 10 or Windows 11 requirements, but um, I will make sure that whenever I do rebuild it, it is compatible with Windows 11. Do I suggest that you go out and get a new computer just to have Windows 11? No, it's nice, but it's not that nice. Do I think that you should go and rebuild your computer just to have Windows 11? Again, no. I think that if you can get the free upgrade, you should, you know, back up your data, go for it. Uh, but I don't think that you should go out of your way to spend, you know, hundreds of dollars just to be able to upgrade your computer. Just my two cents though. Sorry for ranting uh, in much of this video as I try not to, but I think everybody should consider my thoughts and some negative side of things as well as others thoughts some neutral thoughts some positive thoughts you know try to take everybody's uh, thoughts into consideration to make your own you know, and even your personal thoughts tests on things and uh, what you see and have experienced i think you should take all that into consideration not just about windows 11 and other technology but i think about everything in the world no matter what the topic is i think you should know you know both sides of the story before you know making your own opinion better to be informed so as always thank you for watching be sure to like and subscribe